Hello, my name is Professor Mafangwe Maple and I'm the Deputy Chair of the National Suicide Prevention Fund's Research Advisory Committee. I'm going to talk you through just a few things that we look for in our PhD applications um, for scholarships under the fund. So the first thing is to ensure that your application um, meets one or both of the priorities of the fund. So there's two priorities, the first being what works to prevent suicide and suicidal behaviour. The second is what factors are protective against suicide. In the application form, you'll be asked to identify which of those two priorities your application um, and your proposed research addresses, um, and maybe one or both. A PhD scholarship is a terrific way to undertake your PhD research. It allows you to work full time on your research um, and to be mentored through a three year study program funded um, with a scholarship. It's a fantastic way to gain research experience in suicide prevention. Um, it will allow you to work with your supervisors and often a broader research team. There may be people for, with lived experience on that team and there might be service providers. You may also then have the opportunity to work with other PhD students as well as early career researchers amongst a broader team of researchers. What we look for in the application is the, um, some information about you, about your proposed project and about the team who will be supervising you. In relation to you, what we want to know is that, you're, that you have the foundations um, of research training um, that you can build on in your PhD program, that you're interested in suicide prevention as a topic for your research and for your future career, and that you have the skills um, that are there to be developed in your um, project. In relation to your project, we looked for a sound research project um, that is going to address those um, priority areas and I'll talk a little bit more about those in a moment. In relation to your team, we look at your supervisors and to ensure that they're able to provide you with what you need in your research program, that they have the resources around them and that they have the skills to undertake supervision of a PhD student um, and through that research project. So in relation to your project, what we're looking for there is a strong design. We want to know that the research is appropriate for the research questions that you aim to address. We want to see that it's a coherent um, piece of work that will be accessible at the end as a PhD under the rules and guidelines of the university that you'll be enrolled through. We want to ensure that the methods are clear. So make sure that when you're writing your proposal that you're very clear about your research methods, what, how you'll use different techniques and how you'll um, find the evidence that you're looking for to produce at the end of your PhD. You want to ensure that anybody reading your application can see exactly what it is that you're planning to do and how you're planning to do it. I recommend that you have other researchers, including your proposed supervisors, to read through your application and to make sure that your research is very clearly documented and that any other researcher could read this application and really understand what it is that you're going to do, how you're going to do it and what the end product is going to be. In what ways that's going to address the research priorities of the fund and how you're going to translate that knowledge into practice, into new theory, into ways we understand suicidal behaviour to reduce the impact of suicide in our community. Navigating ethics is difficult often in suicide prevention research and so you need to think about the ethical considerations in your research. It may be that you're joining an established research team and that within that team there's already projects set up that you'll walk into in your PhD. That's fine. Uh, we just want to know which part of that research is going to be your PhD and that that PhD is going to be meeting the guidelines of the research, um, the research guidelines within the institution in which you're enrolled. You may have supervisors from a variety of different institutions. That's okay as well. It'll be that you're enrolled in one institution. You'll be asked to consider how you're going to involve people with lived experience of suicide. 
you yourself might have a lived experience of suicide, we want to understand in which ways you'll collaborate and you'll have feedback into the research project through lived experience. What we mean there is that in what ways will there be collaboration, in what ways will there be input, and in which ways will there be interpretation um, from people with lived experience of suicide or, or those who provide services to prevent suicide. So it might be in the ideation phase, in the development phase, it might be in the design of the project, it might be in implementing the project, it might be through evaluation of the project, or it might be all four. If it's all four, we talk about co-creation of new knowledge together, how we've done that as a team. It's not going to be appropriate for every project to use all four parts of that co-creation process. So be clear about where and how you're going to involve people with lived experience, considering always the old adage, not about us, without us. So where is it appropriate? How is it appropriate to the project? And in what ways will you engage in a meaningful way people with lived experience to help enrich your project? We look forward to your application um, and to seeing the sorts of research that new researchers coming to this field are interested in understanding. Um, and I wish you the very best in your application.